weekend all. I Rapstein, and here we are with your weekend update, and we'll cover the weekly charts in the financial markets for this Friday, the 16th of February, 2024. Now remember, it's President's Day on Monday. You'll get some cash markets. The stock market won't be open. Many of the futures markets will be open, abbreviated sessions. So light volume, just expect all that to happen. But what's the event of this week? Well, I can tell you ahead of time, it's NVIDIA. So on the 21st, the earnings come out for NVIDIA. This is a stock that is priced for perfection. Uh, every two weeks, three weeks, it seems that another brokerage firm comes out and raises where the market will go. It has stuck its neck way up. And the question is, at some point, you know, all bubbles get a slight pop. The markets come back. I didn't say a sharp break, but to reality, this is an unusual stock because the market has decided that it is the bellwether, the baby of artificial intelligence, and that is taking over everything. So it's higher for longer, and the fear of missing out, FOMO as it's called, is there. I mention it because it's the dominating factor. Now, I don't know if you were like me today. I was watching the stock industry scratching my head all day and not from dandruff. And I do take care of my hair. It had to do more with, I'm looking at it and I say, now the CPI and the PPI both came in hotter than normal or expected might be a better word. And the market didn't break. In fact, I was watching the S&P flirt during the day, kept going positive. And I'm going, I don't get this. Um, I'm watching then the Fed members come out and they're saying pretty much the idea that I have had that when rates come for the cut, they're not going to be as aggressive as you think until we see the labor market get hurt. And we haven't seen that yet. So a small blip up, be it uh, three tenths, a tenth, is that really what the issue is about? Well, the issue is about you're at sticky inflation. So the last mile, you hear that term all the time in marathon races and so on, it is the hardest mile. And that's where we're at. Some people think, well, the Fed will overdo it, therefore the labor will crash. And as the labor comes crashing in, then the Fed has to get ahead of the curve. You always hear the fact that uh, the Fed always misses it. They're always late to the party and the market's going to get hurt. How long have we heard about a recession that has not occurred? Aren't you tired of hearing that? Because that's all you keep hearing. Did we not hear it most of 2023? And here we are almost in the two months. And some of the same people are saying that's going to be it. I have my doubts on that. What I think will happen is eventually the lag effect does work. High interest rates are restrictive. You will get a slowdown. A recession is a big word unless labor gets out of control. And we do keep seeing company after company that seems to be reporting earnings at the same time saying, yep, we're going to let go of X percent of our workforce and so on. So then we look at the jobless claims that we had this week. And in the jobless claims, you saw they keep falling. I'm not worried about the continuing because they jump from moment to moment. By the way, what's up? See this behind me? Remember, we're going to have a live webinar this coming Thursday. In order to get into it, you've got to move your cursor to the top up here. When you do that, do yourself a favor, give it a click, sign the form. You'll get your user ID, your password. And if you have questions on stock indices or any of that, you can write them to me. In the live room, you can ask questions on the futures because I've got all the futures charts ready to go. If you have questions, call my staff, 866-973-2077. Okay. So back to what we were talking about. So I, I think this is what you're facing right now. You're, you're facing a market that is just very, very strong. And yes, we will see, like I was talking about in the jobless claims, the continuing part jumps, then it falls back. But continuing's after the first week or so of the claims come in, and then we see them go up and down a little bit. Okay. The other thing that I, I've got to remind people of, where are we in terms of time? We are February 16th. In the Midwest, 
in much of the United States. This isn't the ideal time for construction, outdoor activities, dining outside, and so on. You're going to get, come spring and summer, another wave where people will be hiring, that construction will go to work, the camps will go back to work, the dining experiences outside will fill up again, as you know. So there's a certain amount that's gonna get cushioned here because the summer gets those people. Now, the people that are being let go, and I made a point of this this week in high tech, that's the unusual part. Before, no, I can't afford to lose that employee under any circumstance. Now it's okay, you're calling the ranks. Other companies will pick up these people that have died to get them and couldn't get the personnel and now they'll get them. So I wanna see more. But I have a feeling that we have two events left. The event this week, NVIDIA, could be the surprise. You could hit your numbers and still correct. You could hit the numbers and run to the moon. I don't know, nor does anybody else, because of that FOMO. What I can tell you is my experience has been that if you break, and it's somewhere along the line you will, it'll be short-lived. And the reason is the people will come out and say, this is your opportunity to get into this stock again. That is how I'm viewing it, and we'll see if I'm right or wrong. Now, when we look at the S&P, again, for the month, we're halfway through, you're up 3% for the month. I mean, this is just unbelievable how the market keeps going. For the week, you lost a little bit. You lost a half a percentage point. You can see how the market is now starting to I wish I could use the word stall. I don't know that that's the right word right there. It just sort of backed off a little bit. How's that? The pattern is still one of higher lows and higher highs on a weekly chart. You're still over all the key moving averages. That part is bullish. As I said, higher lows, higher highs, and nowhere near the Bollinger Band. Nor do I think it's gonna go there unless NVIDIA runs to the moon. If it does, a certain amount, remember, then you're gonna get all those AI stocks that go, we're too cheap. If that can keep going, we can join the party. So the S&P and the NASDAQ will come alive on that. If NVIDIA breaks, how much is being propped up because of the AI, and do we go whoosh for a moment, the bottom comes out of the market? That could easily happen. You have the bullish embedded reading, that part says that breaks in the market, still gonna get bought by the pros, but my guess is, remember, we're not opening the stock market on Monday, so come Wednesday after we see the earnings gives you Thursday and Friday to be really worried about the market. If you had a hard break, wherever the 18-day co average comes in would be where I think the support would, uh, would come into the market. You did finish down for the week 51 points. So, you know, it's the first break that we've had in a little bit of time. In the NASDAQ, you can see we're getting a market that is pulling back right here. Here too, you have the embedded reading. But if you lose those readings, wherever these 18-week averages come in, that's where I think the market could be going. The Russell's in its own world. The Russell says, oh no, no, nothing's gonna break. I, I wanna buy this market and keep going. I have problems with that. But as a chartist, I have no problem. This is a bull market right now. Yeah, as a chartist, and that's what I am at the end of the day. I saw a bullish crossover where the 18 week got over the 100. Now it's about to attack the 200, and at that point, you open up the avenue here for the upper band. So forget what I think, more or less, it's about what the chart is saying. Now, there's a negative here. The negative is you're overbought. Embed and you get me very friendly. Don't, and so far this is no more than a rally that could end up again coming back to these moving averages to prove itself. We know that there's a slew of money, I mean a big pile, that wants to pick off individual small caps. That's all you keep hearing, Bloomberg, CNBC, Fox, every time they're interviewing analysts, yeah, it might be time to go picking there because this market's not over. Well, number one, I think the market's ready for a correction or a pullback. It, it's gonna be up to what NVIDIA does and I get it, but if you were to ask me that, nothing grows to the moon. This market's gone up since October 26th, 27th. It's overdue, it's gotten ahead, it, it's beaten all the projections early on that many of the analysts had. You remember I told you, I, I look at the projections at uh, year end, 
I used to write those when I was much younger. There's no point in it. You, you don't know what's gonna happen every quarter, let alone try to predict out a year. But people do that and they'll give you the reasons. And I think it's a good exercise. I love to read them. But the most I saw was in the 5,400 area. I mean, there was an outlier number I did see of 6,000 in the S&P. But I, I, you know, even then, corrections are normal. So I'm just warning you, you could be there. In the five-year note, interest rates are going higher. Has anybody looked at mortgages today? Over 7%. Took a big jump on them, big jump. Higher, high, lower, low, bit of a problem there. Same in the 10-year note, look at. So you, you wanna tell me we're gonna keep running as interest rates keep going higher, and I have a problem with that. You wanna tell me interest rates are going higher, that we've got inflation picking up a little bit, we've got CPI picking up, and the Fed's ready to cut. I have a problem with that. Obviously, I've got problems. I should go see a shrink. In the dollar index, we've got higher lows, higher highs. I was surprised the dollar didn't run more today. That was, I had two big surprises. I kept watching all day going, why is this stock market staying up? And I said, the only reason can be they're thinking the video is coming out and that's going to be their savior with the earnings. That's, I swear to you, what I was thinking. Then I kept turning to the dollar. And if you looked at the daily charts, it just wasn't picking up. The weekly's still okay. What I don't want to see, there is a what I don't want. You have an outside week up. I don't want to see this lows violated. If so, this market may not be as strong as I think. But if it's not, and this market can clear this 104.35 area, you do open your door up for that 106 zone. Right now it's 106.50. That'll fall a little bit, though, when the market reopens Sunday night. In the euro currency, an outside weak to the downside. If I'm saying day every now and then, I apologize. It's, it's outside weak down. I don't want to see this week's high taken out. I want to see the market still propel itself lower. It can go to the 106.50 area. There will be a battle sooner rather than later in the eurozone. Where Miss Lagarde, as much as she wants to hang on there, as Germany sneezes, the Eastern European countries are already in trouble. There's recession words happening everywhere. And somewhere along the line, she is waiting to see that those inflation pressures fall off because of the recessionary words that are happening in many of these countries. She'll jump like that when given the opportunity. She needs that data to give her the opening. In the Canadian dollar, battleground is clear. It's the 18-week average of closes. While the trend's been down, all you've done is fallen back to the support there. In the end, I remain in the bear camp. Uh, I realize so many people are saying, oh, they're going to be moving away from the rates and so on and so forth. They have told you what they need. Mr. Ueda has said, I mean, he could pull a surprise, of course, but he has said he'd like to get through the labor negotiations, which happened in early March, and see that wage inflation gets locked in, embedded. What do the unions get out of this? They happen to do everything at one time there. It's the nature of how they do it. And there's more time left. This is Feb 16th, we'll see. We have heard that smaller companies have already gone with 30, 40% increases in wages to attract young people. And remember that population has a dying off young people amount, all right? In other words, they're not replenishing the way that they used to, so they have to pay more to hire people. This is what he wants to see. The stock market there is on fire. If you watch it, you can see what the low yen has done. Their stocks are running. It's one of the best performing stock markets in the world. And therefore, yeah, there'll be a point in time where this market's no longer a short sale. I don't think we're there at this point in time. I think you're a little early, not much, but early still to be a buyer. I still like the short side. Bitcoin. Nah, I, I follow what I do. I realize everybody, they're talking, we're going up here. People are talking half a million dollars. When you're over a Bollinger Band, you only stay over at 5% of the time. I don't give a darn. That's how it works. And the market will pull back here. Are we trending? No, we've had a vertical price rise. You've come here from this 38,000 level all the way to 52. Market's done an awful lot of work very fast. It might need to go into a consolidation. 
On the energy market, if you look at the differential between Brent and WTI, you've crashed through the 18 week average. So the two prices are getting closer and closer together. They have been acting in a bullish concert together, bullish, higher lows, higher highs, and over the 18 week average of closes, the market has made one attempt at the 200 week, it held it. Now the question is if it can lift, then I think the next stopping spot's near the 90 level, the 89 zone. WTI is the same thing and still looking to me on the friendly side in this chart. So you'd have to get through, not this week's low, but last week's low, do damage to both Brent and WTI. In the heating oil market, I think now you wanna make your shift. So I'm gonna leave heating oil in the next week or so. I said I would do it, I was gonna do it today, but I think I'll leave it on and start moving the gasoline because what's gonna happen? We're going driving. So. Pretty soon the maintenance levels happen. You start shutting down the refineries. You make the blend switches. That is when you don't see crude oil being bought for a short while because you don't need to buy it as you're doing the maintenance in the different refineries. America doesn't have a separate refinery for gasoline, a separate one for heating oil. We use one refinery, we switch it over, and that's how it's done. It goes into the what we'll call spring maintenance right around the corner. And you'll see that those events happen. These are cyclical things that happen every year. Again, cyclical for you. I'd love for you to join me in my WhatsApp app. All you do is move your cursor up here. I have sent the invites out to everybody via email. There's nowhere on the website that you sign up. You gotta do it via this or you call my staff at 866-973-2077. Bring your questions. We'll open up at 12.15 p.m. Central Time. I start talking at 12.30. I am done 20 minutes later. There is no video available. If I'm gonna make my time available, you change your schedule to join in. There's no charge to join in, but you gotta figure your way into it. I'm Ira, you have yourself a great day. And by the way, I'm intentionally doing it the day right after the NVIDIA earnings. I normally want to be moving to Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I move this one back because we're going to discuss that. You have a great one.